Okay, so maybe we should have some questions from the audience. I don't know, maybe Peter will want to, uh, well, okay, so I'll do it. Yes, you over there. That's you. I don't know your name. Yeah, uh, you have been uh, discussing a bit about your famous and good work. And I would like to hear a bit about, I guess that you also have papers that have not received so much attention. <laughs> Paper that maybe you're not so satisfied with. And uh, do you think, do you, do you see any common theme in these papers? For example, that you haven't been thinking enough about the topic? Or that it is really good work, but the, 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 the audience haven't really got your point? And also a second question, do you think also uh, that you have some work that you think that have got maybe too much attention? Do you think that maybe I, I should have spent a bit more time before publishing? What's your name? Nika and Bast, Uppsala University. All right. Every now and then I I'm looking for a, a book. All, all, all of my works are on some bookshelves in a library we have. And every now and then I just pull out a book and look at something that I wrote 30, 40, 50 years ago. Looking to see whether I should be ashamed of it or proud of it or whether if I I had a second chance to rewrite it. I would like a chance to rewrite it. Uh, there are a very few things that I'm a little bit embarrassed about. And I won't tell anybody what they are. <laughs> <laughs> but mo mostly, mo mostly, uh, mostly I'm satisfied. And I, th I think, this may get back to something Richard was, was trying to get. I think when I have occasion to go back and read things that I wrote 40 or 50 years ago, I, I think I recognize something that is common to almost everything. It's hard to specify what it is, but uh, I guess the best way to see it is that they all sound like me. <laughs> At least to me they do. And there are very few that might embarrass me. All right. Um, and, and may, maybe I wouldn't confess if there were more. I don't know. <laughs> um, yes? What's your name? My name is Bruce Cogan. I wanted to ask you um, about morality. Morality ever is an aspect of the solutions to a bargaining game. Whether morality is ever part of a solution to a bargaining game, or even the context of the example you gave us about shooting someone is, is I mean, we understand what that means, but it's a little, it's a little um, awkward in some in some ways. So does, does morality mean it in the context of the solution? And how would how would it matter? I think it's hard to dissociate morality from bargaining. Most people who engage in bargaining try very hard not to lie, not to cheat. I, th I think it may bother them to pretend. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I think, trying to think of some examples, but. Uh, Of Pardon me? Your work on segregation on the micro motor yeah. behavior show that people could have private moralities, but there could be a behavior, a rapid behavior, which we don't like. That's a kind of a, an analysis, I guess, of, of a gap in the individual and the macro morality. But I'm just at an individual level of how that might, that might happen. Well, and. <laughs> You mentioned my analysis of segregation behavior. Uh, the motives that lead to segregation, whether it's segregation between races segregation between students and faculty, segregation between English-speaking and French-speaking, segregation between officers and enlisted people in the military service. Uh, often find themselves in strongly segregated society which bothers them morally. <laughs> but it's hard for them to do anything about it. In fact, one, one of the results of my studies of segregation is that one potential cause of segregation is <coughs> too great a willingness of the majority to enjoy the company of the minority. Let us say, whites are 90% and blacks are 10%. And the whites all feel that it's wrong to separate from each other. But if the blacks are not willing to be 10% surrounded by 90% whites, they may be uncomfortable integrated and separate in order not to be what you might call an acute minority. And that poses a problem because in a way the The whites, by trying to associate with the blacks, force the blacks to escape in order to have their own society. But I think, I don't think there's anything about my kind of bargaining theory that omits morality. Most of the people I know have a very strong sense of morality. I, I may not agree with their particular morality, but, but I, I think most of us have very strong moral values, even, even if somebody despises my morality. I remember I once, when I was very young, old enough to drive an automobile, I was driving across the United States with two friends. And one of them had a cousin in the South, in Memphis, Tennessee. And we were at lunch there. 
And when the lunch began, the man of the family at the head of the table said, before we eat, let's get one thing straight. We don't believe we descended from monkeys, and we don't believe in equal rights for niggers. That said, let's enjoy our lunch. <laughs> that was his morality, <laughs> which I didn't <laughs> particularly share. But uh, well, I hope that's an answer. I don't know. Uh, time for one last question. OK. Why don't you stand up, say who you are. Um, I was wondering, you said that uh, topics mostly found you, uh, but you must undoubtedly have been approached by more topics than you could work on. So how did you reject topics, so, or how did you decide, decide not to work on something and not work on something else? I think the only way I could figure that out would be to think of when I had to choose among two or more things that sort of presented themselves, and I had to pick one. And when I was invited to get involved in climate change, I don't know, I don't remember what I abandoned in order to take that on. Uh, when I got interested in drugs and addictive behavior and so forth, I don't remember consciously selecting that over some other opportunity. A number of times, friends would invite me to come and give a lecture on some topic that he or she knew I was interested in. So that I would think that not just on something as huge as climate change, which preoccupied me for 30 years, uh, There were other things that people would suggest. And I must have, as you suggest, I must have made selections. But I, I don't really have recollection of what, what, what I didn't do. It's what I did that I tend to remember. OK, so let's give Professor Schelling a big applause.